Hey, what's going on, champs? I'm Erin Deliosa. Welcome to an Immigrant's Life podcast, my podcast about immigrants and immigration and everything in between. Thank you for listening and downloading the show, and thank you for supporting my dad. Okay, first and foremost, before we start, I want to wish a belated Happy Father's Day to all the dads. My they be biological dads, stepdads, foster dads, adopted dads, future dads, it doesn't matter. If you are there for your child, I want to greet you a belated Happy Father's Day. Second, I want to thank you for joining me once again for another episode of An Immigrant's Life. For those who don't know, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at An Immigrant's Life for bonus contents. We are available on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcast. You still with me? I know I blabber too much at times, but now I'm done, so let's talk about the episode. I I want you to imagine being a child and your mom leaving you for on and off a decade or so because she needs to migrate to a different country so she can work and provide you a better life. But because of desperation, she leaves you with practically strangers for them to raise you and quote-unquote take care of you. And they are terrible human beings, by the way. That's our week's guest life. I think I've said enough. So, without further ado, let's get into the show. Isa, dalawa, tatlo. Today's guest is on my Mount Rushmore of friends. He's a former multi-sports athlete, a sneakerhead, and a father to humans and plants. My brother from another mother. Everyone, please welcome... Christian Katapusan. Hey, hey, what's up, champ? How are you? It's been a long time, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I miss you. I miss you, brother. It's been uh, more than a decade since we last saw each other. You know? or, yeah, it is. It is. It is. Six? Way too long, brother. Yes, know, brother. Anyways, yeah. thank you for coming on the podcast. Anytime, anytime, champ. Anytime. Whenever you need me. I know that. You I know, know me. That. You know me, champ. Yes, sir. So, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, by the way, my name is Christian Hilgitapusan, a former overseas Filipino worker who, who worked for 18 years for a um, business tycoon back in Saudi. But now, I'm living back here in the Philippines because of the pandemic. So, that's it. I'm a homeboy now. <laughs> I'm a homeboy father now. That's all good. That's all good. So I'm father like to I... all my plants, brother. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by the way, I love your plants. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, like I mentioned in my introduction, you're a sneakerhead. Do you still collect shoes? And approximately how many shoes do you still have? I uh, used to be a sneakerhead way back then, but, you know, I got fed up because I can't wear my sneakers anymore because of my, you know, my job. It's really hard for me to, you know, wear them casually because I used to wear now formal shoes like for... The last six years of my uh, my life, I've been, you know, using formal shoes now. So it's really hard for me to collect anymore. So like I gave up collecting shoes like four years ago, three years ago. Uh, so at the moment, I still have at least, I think, 20 pairs of shoes, like basketball shoes, sneakers, and other rails. But way, way back then, I used to own like, not that much, but it's like 40, 40 pairs, 50 pairs, something. Something yeah. like that, yeah. That's decent amount, decent amount. Um, when did the obsession for shoes came from? Way, way back, you know that when back when back back in high school. But you know, back in high school, um, I can't afford to buy one, so it's just a dream for me to have a pair of shoes. Now, do you I have really want, shoes you know? back in high school? I don't have, brother. I have that world balance thing and KPs. You know. I don't know about that. You, I remember you used to have this Adidas. Damn. Those nice that's ones. That's back in that's back in college, brother. Oh yeah. That's back in college when I already uh, when, when I can't afford already to buy sneakers, decent okay. pair of sneakers. You know, we back in high school. You know, you know, you know, life is miserable, brother. You know it. <laughs> You're telling me, homie. So, just a quick background between me and Ian. We met in grade school, but we weren't really friends. I know you, you know me kind of deal, but the first time I really noticed you 
was when something traumatic happened to you. And that's when yes, your brother. dad passed away. Yeah. Can we talk about Bring that? Back. Yeah, it's okay. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, back in third grade, yeah, <clears throat> my father passed away before, before third grade ends. Like mm. a month before third grade ends, you know. Um, he was a long time diabetic. Oh. Most of his life, he was a diabetic, you know. So he's been uh, struggling with his diabetes way, way back when he was young. He had this, um, some other illnesses like, you know, you know, when you have diabetes, you have uh, other, other, other illnesses comes out like high blood pressure. Uh, yeah, 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 for sure. So wh like what happened? Was he rushed to the hospital? How did you guys find out? As far as I can remember, he had a stroke. Wow. Before um, before third grade starts, late at night, he had a stroke. Mm. And he called my mom. He said um, he can't feel his body. Half of his body, he can't feel it. So um, my mom rushed him to the hospital, for sure. Um, and after that, he was he was sick for a year. And then after that, you know, it, it's, it, it's a little short process of him being ill um then after he passed away right away you know he had a heart attack okay so his health just diminished after that after after that yeah okay so he was he was mm, sorry mm. He, i was right beside him when he had his heart attack and you know mm. um and passed away eventually so uh i witnessed everything you know his mm. passing and everything and other stuff that's it must be hard Oh, it is, but that's life, brother. We keep on pushing. I was young back then, but you know, I pushed, I pushed myself, you know, so hard, and you know it. You've seen it, champ. Mm. So you end up with your mom, and were your mom working then? Back then, no, because we all depend on my 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 father's um uh, my my father's income because he is he have a stable job. And we have some little businesses, as you know it. We have a little restaurant back then. We have lots of, you know, mm. um, transportation vehicles, something like that. Mm. And some little businesses too. Yeah, nah. like for school services. And as as you know it in the Philippines, we call it tricycle. You know, a recycled mm. motorcycle back in the Philippines, uh, back here in the <laughs> Philippines. You know that. So when he passed away no one took care of the businesses and then it started going down uh, actually when he got sick the time he got sick our business is about you know were is about to close because nobody's looking after it because my dad starts mm -hmm. to feel sick something like that and uh, you know my mom handles everything the business you know um everything everything in between she She's responsible in everything because my dad have his day job, regular day job. So my mom, you, uh, my mom needs to look after the business. But all of a sudden, mm. my dad felt sick. She have to look after my father. So everything doesn't go well that time. You know, everything goes. You know, um, we can't control everything. So. We we uh we shut down everything. We shut down everything. Oh, so you, so she can focus on your dad, yes, and then eventually the definitely. business exactly. went away. Exactly. So when your dad passed away and the business just goes away too, eventually, I know your mom decided to migrate to Riyadh. Yes, she did. She did. Yeah, because my uh, when my father passed away, we we are left. We we owe. A lot of money to people, you know, because my dad got sick, so his bills and everything. So we don't have the resources, so we have to, you know, um, borrow money from people, from you know, relatives and you know, people that we know. We owe a lot of money. That's why. That's why my mom decided to, you know, work abroad. That's the reason why. That's the reason behind. Okay, she worked abroad. Who did she leave you with? You know, that's you know, this is the. Um, this is the most interesting part of this podcast, you know. And you know, you can relate to this, man. Um, we have lots of employees back then when we were, you know, when we used to have uh, our own business. And we have uh, trusted people that who works for us. 
And then when my mom decided to uh, work abroad, she left me with, um, I was left with the people that actually is not my relative, but they used to work for us. They are the ones who are looking for me when my mom left for abroad. Mm, how many people are there? Like how many people taking care of you? Actually, it's one family composed of two sons. Of course, the the mother and the father, but it's the mother only who works for us back then. And then when my mom oh, okay. when when my mom decided to apply for abroad and work work abroad, um, she told this uh, this lady to look after me because she trusted her. That's why she, I was left with them. You know, you didn't have relatives that she could leave you with. Um. Here in my hometown, uh, no, there is none because my mom is from way far from the north. So most of her relatives are either in Manila or back in the province. And here in my hometown, there's, there's, there's no one who can look after me. That's why I was left with those people who's not my relatives, actually. So why didn't she send you to her family? I, I refused to because I don't want to live in the province. I'm already in the province. Why should... <laughs> she throw me back to the, you know in the province okay you don't want to go further on. yeah so when she decided to migrate how did your mom tell you that she's leaving y- you to migrate did you completely understand what was happening yeah i know i i completely understand what's happening because you know my mom is very transparent in everything you know she's mm-hmm. very vocal in our you know troubles and in our success you know she talks about everything that's why i learned a lot from her you know i owe i owe a lot from her how did she tell you she said that you know you know son um, we owe a lot of money to people so i need to do something i need to i need to leave you because i need to work i need to earn money because we owe a lot of money to people and we can just you know let those people you know keep on telling us pay us back pay us back you know, I can't, I can't take it. Each and every day, people are telling you, pay us back. When are you going to pay your, you know, your debt? I said, it's okay, mom. I can understand. I understand. I understand it very well. That's why I told her if that's what is necessary, if that is what is needed, you know, just go on. I'll, I'm, I'm just right here. I'll be a good son. No worries. Okay. So I, I'm going to tell you how I felt when my mom left. Okay, I remember the day when she told me that she's leaving. How, how I felt was, oh yeah, she's leaving, but she's going to come back. You know, I felt like she's just going to go to the next town over kind of deal. Yeah. That's how I felt. Till I realized, oh shit, she's not coming back for a while. Yeah. This Was that your thinking too? Or you completely understood that she's going to be gone for a bit? Of course, that's a concern for me. But because of the situation, you know, I understand it very, very well. And openly accepted that she's going to leave me not for a while but for a quite a while you know for a year or two that's you know i already know it i already knew it back then that she's going to leave me for about a year or two but she she was she 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 was away for like three or four years you know Ooh. you know that rather I've, I've been jumping from one house to another you know it yeah so she finally left she left you with this woman with her family what's the deal with money does she send it directly to these people and then give it to you or directly to definitely. you definitely the my, my mom sent the money uh, right straight to them you know uh, uh i'm studying high school in a private school but they're just giving me way way below you know what they can give me actually every day i was given i was given daily like 20 pesos a day and I'm, and I'm studying at a private school you know that brother 20 pesos is what your transportation will be like 6 pesos going to the school going back home is another 6 pesos so what's left for you 8 pesos brother and what you can eat with with 8 pesos <laughs> damn think about it you know no Think about it. Mm -hmm. And then, like, if we have, like, school projects or something like that, if you ask for extra money, they keep on telling me, I'll tell that. I'll I'll, I'll tell that to your mom that you ask for extra money. 
that's always what they told me, you know. That's always what they say every time I ask for extra money because of school projects and other stuff, which I really need, you know. Yeah. And I I go to school like my my school uniform is not pressed or not even washed sometimes. Because I have no time washing it. They they don't wash it for you? They don't. Uh, they don't, as far as I can remember, they don't. I wash my own uni- school uniform, brother. You know? that's. I, I told oh you, God. life is really difficult back then, you know? It's really, really hard. And, you know, these people got, you know, dazzled by the amount of money pouring in their pockets every month when every time my mom send them money for, for, my, for my daily expenses. But, you know, I spent almost nothing with the money my mom sent me. Hmm. So, I know you were younger then, but did your mom tell you, hey, I'm sending you this certain amount of money, you should receive this certain amount of money? Not specifically, not specifically with the amount of money, like how much money is she sending every month. But every time I ask something for her, she always tells me that you have, you have the money, I sent you the money. They have the money, they have your money. Mm. That's what always my my mom always tell me, and figure wise I don't know, but she always say that you have money, your money is with them. Ask ask for your money, and you know communication back then is really hard. You know it's like uh, hmm. via post mail. You know that we don't have internet back then. We don't have like social media or any any so any internet platform oh for us to communicate easily with others. You know. From far away. So that's it. It's really hard. If I need something, I need to write my mom and send it to her in Saudi. And then I still have to wait for what? Three three weeks, four weeks, five, five weeks or something like that. For her response, if I would have that amount, you know. And when I got her response and read his le- her, her letter, she keeps on telling me that your money is with them. Ask for it. So... If I will complain mm-hmm. that I ask for five pesos, they told me that I will tell that to your mom that you ask for extra money. Oh, they scare you. You know, you know, you you, you know, you have. Do I have to write that down my complaints to my mom and wait for another five weeks for her response? What is going to be her reaction after? So w- what I mm. did is like I I worked extra for me to have extra money. For me not to ask for my my own money to them, you know. Because every time I ask money, hmm. they keep on telling me that, that, you know, your mom just sent us this money, exact amount of money, you can't have extra, blah, 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 whatsoever, etc., etc. You know, that's bullshit, you know. Sorry for for my word, but, you know, that's, that's really bullshit, man. That's really bullshit, brother. That's mad, you know. Yeah, that's crazy, man. They took advantage of a little kid. It is. They got dazzled by the amount of money. Just what I told you earlier, you know. They got dazzled by the amount of money that's pouring yeah. in their pockets. Mm-hmm. Okay, so money-wise, that's whatever. But let's talk about the emotional part. When there's like parents-teacher meeting, who stood in for your mom? Ooh, that's that's heartbreaking. I call my elder cousins. I think, as far as I can remember, whoever. Elder cousin is available. I ask for, I ask if they can attend, you know, uh, parents meeting back in school or whatever meetings are called in the school for, you know, for the parents. But most of the time, there's no one attending for me. You know, I just ask for, you know, parents of friends that what was tackled in the meeting what 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 you know i just you know i asked them i just asked them i asked my friends like can you ask your mom or your your dad what what was what what's all about the meeting for for today like for the parents meeting what's all about it so i can you know i can tell my mom like if the i need to pay for something whatsoever you know that's you know see look how hard it is brother mm-hmm. but so you have relatives why didn't you stay with him? Um, um, to be honest, I have relatives from my father's side here in in my hometown, but you know, I'm I'm 
I'm too shy for I'm too shy to you know to ask for their help. Like, can I live with them or can they look after me? I can't because you know mm. we already owe a lot to everybody, so I can't ask for more. Okay, yeah, that's fine. But your mom could ask for for you. Uh, she she at that time she can't because you know we have you know personal issues between you know my fa- my family and the other side of my family so it's re- sometimes it's really hard to ask favor to you know even even with your own family it's really really hard because you know the everybody have different um interpretation on on uh on you asking for like a favor, you know, sometimes, mm. sometimes, um, I'm not telling my own family, but you know, sometimes with, you know, people that I talk with, like, you know, I have relatives, like if you ask for something, they always expect for something in return, you know, something like that. That's what comes into my mind. What if I ask for my relatives, if they can, you know, if they can shelter me, if they can, you know, let me in their house and, you know, live with them. What if they're just showing me that it's okay, but it's not, you know? Mm, yeah, the Filipino way. Yeah, the Filipino way. That's why, you know. They'll smile in front of you and then when you turn around, they, they'll they, say they're, shit about they're stabbing you. you yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's my concern. So what I did is just, you know, just live with it. Just get over it. All of us, everything will be okay anyway. Eventually, I'll just you know, um, yeah. I'll just, I'll just you know, I'll just focus on my goal. You know. Mm-hmm. So, I'm sure you miss your mom during Christmas and all that. What did you do to cope with your mom's absence? Um, I those times I go I, I go to her. I go to her sister's house, like back in, you know, in Cavite or in Manila, wherever they live. So I jump from one place to another, you know, that every Christmas vacation, I, I go to my aunties, like whoever's, whoever invites me, I, I come to them. So every Christmas season, like, yeah, I miss my mom. Uh, I can't even, I can't even call her because, you know, communication is really hard back then, bro. I, I don't have mm. any mobile phone whatsoever it's really really or, mm. or even if i have it's, it's it's too expensive for me to you know call my mom so you just have to look at the stars and let your tears fall that's it <laughs> and you know that's what we always say brother suntok sa hangin that's that's that, that's everything what are you gonna do right yeah so okay you said you go to cavite and you were young then was there someone that co- goes with you, an adult? No, I travel alone. I travel How old alone were you then? by myself. Like I was 13, 12. Okay, so not bad. I mean, yeah, it's still although, young, oh, obviously. Yeah, although, yeah, obviously, it's really, really young. So, but back then, you know, with our age, it's it's easier than than this generation. So it's really different. We can stand alone even if we are way too young. Unlike, mm-hmm. you know, uh, this generation is really, really different. So it's really hard for me to cope up with my kids as well. Yeah. So just to give the listeners an idea, how many buses did you have to take to go to Cavite oh, at least? Yeah. So it's from my hometown, Tanay, going to crossing in Mandaluyong. So that's one. Then I need to jump for another bus ride from... From Mandaluyong going to Baclaran, because that's the uh, bus terminal going to Cavite. So from there, I still need to go for another bus ride going to Cavite. So all in all, that's three three bus rides, and it will take me like. And you were thirteen. I was eleven, actually eleven, twelve. I am already, com- uh, I'm already um, commuting by myself. Mm. How do they know you're coming? Um, they already know it. Like ahead of time, I will tell them like, if Christmas vacation is coming, I'm telling them. I, I'm telling them ahead of time. Um, like, through mail? No, you know landlines. Like right, yeah, we have okay, landlines back like then. Yeah, 
mm-hmm. then I can I will, I will call them like you know you know this shops like they have this five five peso per three minute call right you know mm-hmm. you can remember that I will call them like ahead of time oh um like on Christmas vacation can I come to your house can I can I stay there for a while like mm-hmm. until this Christmas season can I stay there and you know up until New Year or if they say if they say yes okay come in then I will... they, they say no one time no they don't uh, okay okay thankfully no they they never refused me to come to their houses you know so I'm assuming they're nice people to you they are they why are, yeah. was there a moment of of yourself thinking you know what I'm just gonna stay here there is there is that moment of time that I want to stay with them but I can't I can't leave my place you know what there's a lot of issues um you know um just I would just want to be honest, you know. I came from a second family, you know that. And it's uh I'm a I'm a t- I'm a kind of tell all kind of guy, you know. I don't I don't I'm not ashamed that, you know, I came from a second family. I'm mm-hmm. I'm proud of who I am and what I am and what what, what name I'm I'm carrying. It's it's not an issue to me. Because I mm-hmm. All uh, what's on my mind is like, okay, I came from a second family, but I want to make my father proud. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's that. That's the thing. That's the issue. That you know. That's why I can't leave my hometown because I need to look after you know what was left behind by my father. His land. Yeah, his land, his old house, the mm. the the place that I used to live in and you know where i grew up so that's the thing that's why i can't leave my hometown that's why i can't leave my place even if even though i have this thinking now i'll have a better life if i'll stay with my aunties with my mom's sisters you know older sisters Mm -hmm. but i can't i can't leave i can't i can't leave my my hometown because i have i need to look after something which is very very special to me which is very very you know um special to my mom because that's the only thing my father left to me you know is the the old house and the the land that that i used to look after back then that's why you know i can't leave even if it's okay with them but you know i need to stick with it i, I need to stick with my with my you know uh my, fa- my, my, my father's property. I need to look after it. You know, I can't. I can't leave that alone. Mm-hmm. So, I remember in high school you were a multi-sports athlete. Yeah, so, yeah. Do you think you use sports to be a distraction with what's going on or not going on at home? It, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I use that mm-hmm. as a diversion to what everything what's going on in my life, like the hardships, you know, the difficulties, you know, the the. Uh, you know the emotional stress. You know everything. Mm. Um, that's why you know I fo- I focused on different disciplines in sports. That's why because that makes me feel comfortable and that um, leaves everything behind. Like what's what's going on in what's going on back home, missing my mom. You know um, a, a lot of things. You know a lot of difficult things. Sports. You know. Sports um, make me pass through everything. Mm, it gave you confidence, and also, let's not lie, we you get attention from it. Yeah, of course, because I'm yeah. good. Because I'm good, champ. You know that. That's why no, I get that. Well, good or not good, <laughs> you know, if you play on the court, you yeah. get attention. And obviously, yeah. us being young then and not having our parents, that was important to us. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, anyway. Being boastful aside, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's 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 the reason why you know I feel comfortable playing playing sports because you know mm-hmm. I I get the attention that I want that I needed you know so it it eases all the troubles and the pains you know inside you know that yeah I know so after college you eventually join your mom to work in Riyadh yeah, did. what pushed you to that decision. First and foremost, I wanted to, I wanted to earn. I already mm. want to earn money, you know, because life is life is very difficult back here. Mm-hmm. So, when you decided that you're gonna migrate, 
you told your mom and I'm sure she was happy. Cause... Yes, yes, yes. I told my mom. I said, mom, I finally decided that, you know, I'm really, I'm really, really sorry because, you know, I was not able to finish my, my, my college, but hmm. I want to be with you. Hmm. That's one thing for sure. And for me, that's what's more important than, you know, finishing my school. Because, damn, it's 11 years. For how many times do I only have the chance to be with you? Two or three times in 11 years? That's mad. That's ridiculous. I said, you know, if I will finish studies and we'll work here in the Philippines, so that means I, will, I still have to, I still have to be, a, I still have to stay away from you for a couple of more years, right? For me to mm-hmm. establish myself. I said, no, no, no. That's bullshit. I want to be with you. Just take me, take me there. Yeah, take me, bring me there. And then she agreed. She she said uh, she asked me, "Are you are you sure? Are you really decided that you want to be here? Because here I can't assure you that you will have a you know the job that you re- that you wanted or dreamed about." I said, "It doesn't matter. All I want is to be with you. That's what matters to me." Mm-hmm. So did she ask her employer to hire you? She she requested for her employers to sponsor me with a working visa. And hmm. gladly they did. You know, they sponsored me with a working visa for me to be there as easy mm-hmm. as that. So Because when my mom asked for it, like for a couple of weeks, the visa is already ready. Uh, the visa is already there and ready. So I stopped studying and started to, you know, started to... Um, Finish my application with them. So after a couple of weeks, I left the Philippines. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about when you. So you got on the plane, you landed in Riyadh. I'm assuming your mom picked you up. I know, because you know there's, um, there's um different culture back in the Middle East. So, mm-hmm. what, I mean, what, like yes, but, there but was wait. a driver, yeah, but, but wait, she was yeah, with. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, my mom picked me up. Yeah. You know, sorry, mm-hmm. I I almost forgot it because, man, that's 18 years ago. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I was mm-hmm. working like almost half my life in the Middle East. That's why I forget. Yeah, my mom picked picked me up with the uh, with the driver. Yeah. How did you feel the first time you saw her? Man, I cried a lot. Tears poured like hell. You know, I missed my mom a lot. I was a cry baby when I was in the airport. I missed her a lot. You know, I, I, I nothing can explain. You know the. Uh, the amount of joy that I felt when I saw her, you know, and I said, mm-hmm. finally, I'll be with her for, you know, for the rest of our lives, I hope, you know. Mm-hmm. So what did you do there in Riyadh? At first, my application was um, a um, hotel crew in a, in Holiday Inn in Riyadh. It was my mom's employer and the owner of Holiday Inn in Riyadh, they are relatives, so that that's the reason why I had this working visa very easily. And did you end up working at the hotel or? No, I, I ended up working with my mom's employer because they saw my potential. They mm. said, they told my mom, your, your son is good. He, he, he looks promising. Um, can we just let him work here and don't send him to his employer? Anyway, I can talk to him. He's my cousin. I'll just take over your son. Because he looks, you know, I see something something good between us. The connection is like different the first time I saw him. So can, can, you, can I just skip him? And my mom said, okay, it's okay. Because we will, we will live in, in, at the same place, at the same palace. You know, that's mm-hmm. why my mom, my mom agreed that I'll just stay and will not go to the hotel that I'm supposed to work, work to, you know. That's why. And, you're, and you were happy with that, right? I, I am. I am more than happy of course, definitely, because I will spend each and every day of my life with my mom, close to my mom. Mm-hmm. I don't need to, like, just call her, are you okay, whatsoever. I, I can see her every time I want to. So what did you do for your employer? I serve as a butler. You know. mm. I serve as a butler for for this, you know, um, Saudi guy, which is a business tycoon. So mm-hmm. I work for him as a butler for three or four years, I guess. And then mm-hmm. 
as time goes by, as he sees I have this, you know, big potential of, you know, um, uh, I had an extra job, but it's unpaid job actually, which is, you know, the most ridiculous thing that happened to me back in Saudi. Mm. I, I took over with his son's English lessons. Like, and he you know, didn't pay you for that? Bullshit, man. He just gave me like 500 reals, which is $120 for like four years of teaching his sons, you know? What? You know, and did, he, did you not, did you not try to say, hey, dude, I'm teaching him English. You What's know, going on here? You know me, man. I, I, when it comes to money, you know, whenever people is happy, it doesn't matter. Money is nothing for me. I never ask for it because they are good to me, you know? Everything is free. Like, my uh, my phone line is free, food is free, everything is free, drink, blah, 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 etc. What is, um, even my underwear is almost free. That's why, you know, that, you know what I mean? That's so why. it wasn't that bad. Yeah, it is. But then it is. Cause, and each and every time, like, for a month, you will receive, you know, um, like, bonuses, something like that. They mm. give you extras, you know. So you don't mind about salary anymore because you were expecting there is something coming like maybe today, tomorrow, or the next day. Hmm. And, you know, when you sum up those money that they give you from time to time, it's more than your salary. Way, way much mm-hmm. more than your salary. So why ask for the, why, why ask for your salary, right? Why ask to mm-hmm. like increase your salary if you keep, mm-hmm. uh, if they keeps on, you know, feeding you with a lot of tips. <laughs> yeah, that, that's good back so, then it's good so living in Riyadh obviously you were culture shocked what part of Riyadh culture took you by surprise the most Ooh. number one thing is like Arabs used to look Filipinos like all of them are gay which is the most what? ridiculous thing that I ever experienced in the Middle East Mm. Yeah, because, you know, I thought when I will go to Saudi Arabia that there's no such thing as gay people, you know. Because as we know it, like, it's a Muslim country. It's very strict. And their law doesn't allow, you know, third sex, quote unquote, in their culture. Mm -hmm. So when it came there, it's like, wow. For the first time, maybe in my life, I won't see anything like that anymore. But damn, you know, I was shocked. Like, I see one, I saw one too many. I said, oh my <laughs> goodness. I thought I, I'm, I thought I'm done with this. But okay, so there's the Filipino gay guys. But you mentioned that I know, Arabs I, I, thought. I, I, sorry to interrupt you. But mm-hmm. uh, no offense to my friends, you know, who, 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 will, who will listen to this. Anyway, we're just talking about the the culture shock that, that I, you know, experienced mm. firsthand on, in, in Saudi, you know. Yeah, that's one thing. That's one big thing. And the other is, you know, the way they dress. Of course, they, they, they dress differently, especially those, mm. especially the women. Because most of them, you can only see their eyes. Even their hands are covered, oh. you know. Oh, they wear the burqa? Yeah, the burqa and this um, veils and other stuff that they wear for them to cover themselves so they can... Mm-hmm. What they call this, um, they can, uh, they can preserve their aura, you know, because that's what they believe in, you know, that what, who can only see your, who can see, who can only see your beauty is your partner or your own relative. Okay. What age does the woman decides to wear the burqa? As far as I know, they are forced to wear those burkas or you know that long black dress is when they start having their periods mm. so it doesn't matter the age as long as you get the period you're wearing that i don't i, I don't think so because some at a younger age they already they already teach them to wear that so it depends upon you know how the upbringing of the parents i guess or or the uh the family if they are like very very traditional they like start them young you know, but if they were like, you know, like mostly with those wealthy families, which most of the time lives in the Western world, you know, they don't give a shit. 
Yeah, they're they're more liberal. Maybe they are more liberal. They are liberated. You know, they they can be one. They wear it like, but it's like open, and they're not you know covering themselves completely. Mm. And that's okay in Riyadh. It's not okay. Back then, when I first came to Saudi, you know, it's really really strict. Like strict, strict. They have this. They call it um, in Arabic is mutawa, which is for me as I translate it. As I translated, it, it's like um, religious police because they are the one who's uh-huh. roaming around the city, you know, like to uh, um, tell people tell people that wear your wear your head your headdress, whichever you, the the okay. that burka that covers the hair of the uh, woman. You know, they are the, they are more stricter than uh, police itself. They have they have all the power more than the police. No way. Yeah, it is. It is. Oh, wow. Because whenever they roam around the city, the police are just right behind them. And they're like the priests, you know, they are the, um, they are the, uh, you call this, what do you call this? Um, it's like clerics, like, you know, they are the, uh, they are the educators whatsoever. They are the ones who have this, um, like, um, to compare it with the Catholic, it's like the bishops, mm. you know? And that's all they do all day? They roam around the city and everything? Yes, and then, um, you know, they, they, they pray five times a day. Like, at the break of dawn, um, at noon, um, in the afternoon, and before sun before sunset, and in the evening. Like, five, like five, it's five times a day. And they close each and every store mm-hmm. when prayer time comes. And they you have to one, wake up, break of dawn? To pray? For those who are, you know, well-trained Muslims, they 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 are they they are obliged to wake up early, early, early. Like so some of them does, some 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 of them does. Most of them, yeah, most of them, which is which I am, you know, in a positive way in a positive way. Um most of them, like, you know, they have this bad attitude character whatsoever but when it comes to their religion man they're second to none even mm. how much evil they have in their minds and in their hearts but they always they never forget their religion you know that's the um, misconception about Muslim which I learned from you know my long stay in Saudi which I, I, as I told you I I lived there for almost half my life so I get I get I got used to their culture that's what it is like the earliest prayer time that I experienced there is because I used to wake I, I used to wake them up especially when we were out of town so like half past oh it's your obligation to wake them up man because I'm his I'm his assistant I'm uh, after yeah, I know but can that, they set up an alarm or something they can't they can't even if they have appointments special appointments like in their you know, business meetings whatsoever the, the oh, Arabs always comes late I told you. Has it ever happened that you forgot an appointment? No, no, I can't. I can't forget anything, man. <laughs> or else I'll they kick my butt, you know. I know. Not literally, but you know. No. They'll give you shit. You, you know me, man. If uh if it's my job, I will do it. I'll perform, you know. Mm, yeah, for sure. Uh I'll make sure that So I'll... in re- Yes, mm, come on. Go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, that's it. That's that's the kind of thing. There's a lot of, you know, Things that shocked me with their culture, but I get, mm. I got to learn about it, and I got to learn everything. You know, even their language, I learned it like, you know, for about a year. They don't believe that I'm just there for a year because I learned their language. Like, damn, are you are you really Filipino? Because they don't believe in. Oh, you're speaking I, Arabic. I speak Arabic, brother. I how, how did you teach yourself? Um, it's it's like homeschooling yourself. Just books or what? Um, books and keep on keep on asking people like what what is this word in Arabic? What is this word in Arabic? Mm-hmm. Especially those things that I used to hear each and every time. So that sticks on my mind. Mm-hmm. Although I although I already know a lot of you know Arab, Arabic words and stuff. If I don't use it like on a daily basis, I I used to forget it. All the edge comes in, you know. Well, oh, no, like, it's, it's it's language. It goes away. Even I, when with Filipino, there are some words I don't, I don't, I forget yeah, or I don't know. Yeah, that's the thing. I learned, I learned, I learned Arabic like in a blink. 
So I I had some guests that went to Riyadh and worked there. And they gave me this feeling that locals looks really down on migrants like you. Is Can you attest to this? Yes. I am hmm. a witness to that. I can attest to that, you know. Um, because although, although in my case, like with my employer, um, they're a really, really good family, you know. Hmm. They look after us very, very well. Uh, but, you know, not with the late, uh, latter part of my career with them. It's, you know, it, it really, I uh, really get disappointed, but I will talk about it later. But mm-hmm. um, to go back with the issue that you're, you know, uh, you mentioned, it is really, you know, it's like they own you. Your passports are mm. even with them when you work for them. No. It is. Which is you illegal. have to hand it yeah. to them. You have to hand it to them or to the company, which is illegal, right? Because it's your it's it's your identity. So why should I give it to you? You know, wow. every 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 worker in as far as I know, I am ninety nine point nine percent sure that all of uh, uh, all, all of the passports are handed over to the com- either to the company or to the employer. Wow. And thing is like. If they see potential on you and they keep on benefiting on you, they will take advantage of you. You know. So, what are what are the examples that you can give us that a local or a native did to you or said to you that made you feel like you're lower than him? Man, there's a million million things to tell you about it. You know, it, um, let's say, you know, they are slave to you because they own you. That's what they they trying to impose each and every time because I owe you I give you salary so whatever I want I want you to do just do it for me because you know it's like mm-hmm. you're my slave so but in my yeah. case no, it's I mean, not a... no I mean it give us an example that happened to you aha uh-huh. first first thing is like you know my boss is okay he's really good he's a really good guy but his friends some of his friends are like you know you work for my friend, so you have to work for me as well. Mm. You, see, you see how ridiculous it is. It's like, you know, um, whatever I want, whatever I need, just, you know, hand it over to me or give it to me because I'm your boss's friend. So you have to mm. do whatever I want. And, but at first, you know, my first five months, it's okay. It's fine because I'm new, you know, I'm still adjusting. But as time goes by, I said, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not this, I, I'm not this stupid. My mom, my mom didn't send me to school for these people to, you know, to treat me like shit. Mm-hmm. I said, no, no, this is not right. I need to do something. I talked to my employer and said, and told him that if this is, if this is going to continue, what's going on with your friends and me and the others, because, you know, when they want something, they call you like this, uh, you know, you know how we call a dog, man, like, you know, oh, they'll, they'll do the hook finger. They, they do the hook thing, like, or snap their finger, like, Oh, okay. Come here, come here, come here. I want, come here. Um, give me some water, which the water is like right beside him. Whoa. He'll just extend his hand and take it, you know. He just, he still have to call you, like snap his finger or, you know, hook his finger, like come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come here, you son of a whatsoever. Oh, they but, call you names? No, no. Uh, if I don't, if I don't, you know, um, respond to their, you know, sometimes, yeah. But, you know. At the back of my head, but I know it because the other, the other, like the tea, the the tea maker guys tell me that you know this guy told you that you are like this and blah blah blah. And then I come back to them. I said, "What are you trying to say? What are you telling? What are you trying to tell me?" So you talk back to these friends of yes, your employers, of course. And your employer is cool with that. My employer is cool with that. You know what's 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 the thing? What what you know? You know what what gave me the courage? You know to do this to to uh, fight back with these friends is like. You know, you're the one who's you're not the one who's feeding me and giving me salary. And my mom did not send me to school for you to treat me like shit. That's what I'm telling, always telling. And then one time there's a friend of my boss and of my boss um told him that, Hey, you're you're a Filipino guy over there. Who's that? What's his work with you? He said, That guy, that Filipino guy, he's my brother, he's a brother to us. Why? What's 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 the problem? 
because I'm asking for something and he didn't respond. Like, he refused to do what I want him to do for me. I said, man, I can't, I can't do anything about it. That's my brother. I can't do anything about it. Not unless you can give me another one who can work for me like him. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the trouble in the Middle East most of the time. Uh, everybody who works in the Middle East, like like me, can relate to that. You know, that's 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 how they are. Okay. When you're working, did you have rest days? I can have that, but I didn't. I did not ask for it because you know what? What am I going to do with my rest day? Just spend the money that I earned, hard earned money. I, I said, no, it's okay. I'm fine. You can you can call me anytime. I'm all. You know, well, I I'm, know. I mean, you can go to the mall. I guess I don't know. Because any time of the day, if I have nothing to do, I can go. I can go anywhere I want to. I can go visit oh, my friends. Okay. I can see my friends. I can go to the mall, whatever. When they need me, they'll just call me and you know, I'll come over. Oh, okay. So you're on call. If it's busy, like in a business meeting or whatever, then you... Yeah. Because I jumped from one job to another. At first, I was a butler. Then I became his assistant, his father's driver. His father's driver which is the business tycoon back then. Like he's one of the top 10 richest men in South, in, in Riyadh, to be honest. Mm. He's a really, really, really rich guy, you know. When I, once, I just, you know, just to share this with you, once I drove for his dad to collect, to collect, you know, business rents for the establishments, like, you know, the, he's just collecting the money, like in a bag or whatever it is, you know. And uh, he just keep on throwing it in the in the in the in the compartment of the car, you know. No. Way. At the end of the day, man, I'm telling you, if I'm this evil, I'll just pick one one you know, one stash of money, and that's it. He won't even notice. He won't even notice with the amount of money that we have in the car, brother. I'm telling you. Wow. So I know your former employer used to bring you to different countries when he traveled. Did you get paid extra for that? Yes, I do have. I do have extra pay. I, I do have extra pay for that. Like, um, as I call it, is allowance, you know, and you know the mm. uh, and the tips from his relatives as well. Like, they give you money. Like, if you do oh, a favor no for them, yeah, they give you money. Like something like that. Like uh, and um, you know those um, change. You know, if they hand you over like hundred dollars and let you buy for for something for. Eight dollars, and you still have ninety-two dollars left, right? Sometimes they just, you know, leave it with you, like just keep it. No way. Yeah, yeah, man. That's that's how that's easy awesome. money is back then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know some Filipinos, their employers bring them to like UK or whatever country in the in Europe, and some of them ask their employers to, if they can leave them there. Have you ever thought of doing that? That came to my mind a lot of times, you know, especially when I was in America, when I was in the States. But, you know, I can't do that with my mom's, with my mom is right beside me, you know, you know that. Mm, and there's yeah. a lot of, you know, people that I know, especially in Europe, that if you want to stay here, just let me know. You know, uh, I'll help you out. You know, mm. so that's tempting, you know, it's because what comes at the back of your head is like, damn, this is a dream for me. I want to be here in Europe. You know, I want to stay here. Life is, uh, you know, I have bigger chance of making my life better back here. That oh, comes yeah, on my definitely. mind, but, you know, but, but still, I can't do this with my mom on my side. If I want to do this, I want to do this on my own. You know, I can't put my mom's name under scrutiny, you know, under, you know, in trouble. Yeah, yeah. She'll get the blame. Yes, of course. Mm, I understand that. Yeah, she's been my shock absor uh, my shock absorber for a long, long time. So why give her another one? You know, it's, <laughs> I can't do that, man. I can't. I can't do that. Of course, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do it. So, how do you think migration improved and helped you as a man? Because I used to, you know, that helped me a lot. Uh, I learned a lot of a lot of things, you know, living from different cultures, living from with different um, different nationalities, living with you know different kind of individuals, like character wise, attitude wise, you know, principle wise, culture wise. So I learned a lot, you know. I can I can I can I can I can say that 
I I owe my maturity to for me being abroad because you know it gave me um, different you know different perspective like on how you are going to cope with things and stuff how you're going to solve things and stuff how you're going to you know um, you know a lot of things you know uh, but it really helped me a lot you know mm -hmm. so like I mentioned at the start you're a father how hard was it to be a father and be away from your kids and what did you do to deal with that man that's second to none you know it's really really hard you know that's that, that is my dream even in my yearbook my coach says like in 10 years i want to be i want to become a successful father that's what i said which i am proudly that i can say that i did you know i managed to but going back to the topic uh, it's really really hard it's really really hard you know you know me and my wife is staying um, apart from each other because of, you know because of our jobs because of our work mm -hmm. and you know my first my first born when when he came out in the world is like i only stayed with him for six months like from his birth up until six months and then i came back he is he's already talking he's already walking he's already running you know i missed a lot like i missed i missed his first word his first uh, first step Something, things, little things that you know, um, little things that gives a, a father, you know, great joy because you know, hearing him tell you like for the first time, daddy or tatay or dad or you know, you know, it's a big thing, you know, for for every dad, that's a big thing, and I missed it. I missed all of it because I'm far away. I'm I, I'm working abroad, so. And because I need to provide, you know, what comes, what comes in, what, what just makes me, you know, survive is that I need to do this because I need to, I need to provide for my family. I want to give them a better life, not the life that I had. Oh yeah, for sure. So even though you were having kids, you still left and work abroad. Yes. Was there a time you questioned that decision? No, never. Because me and my wife is open with, you know, the uh, conversation of, you know, we need to do this because if you were you alone will will work we can't we, we can't survive we can that's what decided me to you know still continue to work abroad because you know and then my second born was uh, my second born came in and the third as well and i'm still going out of the country and working abroad because uh, we need to we have to because we still have lots of you know things to look after you know we have, we have bills and stuff and i can't i can't let i can't let my wife do it alone do everything by herself you know yeah i need to provide that's why mm -hmm, for sure for sure so you mentioned that your mom used to come home three to four years how often did you come home when you were working in abroad oh um the first time i left the philippines i, I stayed in saudi for like almost four years then when i met my then wife the longest time i've been up away from them is only like one year and 10 months and then the rest almost every year i go back home like how long do you stay usually back then back then because money is good back then so i stay in the philippines for like four months five months six months oh shit. yes oh. I, I, i'm maximizing you know the uh amount of days in my visa so i said why why should i come back soon if i can stay longer Mm. So, migrating is good to improve your economic status, but places like Riyadh don't allow migrants to be citizens. So eventually, migrants will have to come home, and most migrants do not invest or save their money and eventually going back to their prior economic status. Having said that, what is your plan to avoid that situation? Well, I uh, spend what is only, you know, needed or necessary like um i don't live my life anymore like the way i used to like if i want something i buy i, I buy i buy it like straight away now i'm i started to think i'm starting to appreciate the importance of each and every penny mm -hmm. way back then no because i know um in a couple of days or months i'll be going back to my work so i will earn again now mm -hmm. it's a different thing you know, you have mm -hmm. to, you know, 
especially right now, I'm like 10 months laid off. I'm not working for 10 months because who's going to accept at this moment of time? You know, you know, we have this pan- pandemic and other stuff. What made you decide to come home? Family. Mm. Family. Nothing else. Because I'm already fed up with my with the kind of job that I have and the kind of people that is around me. It's been like almost two decades doing the same thing. I got burned, you know. I, I was totally burned out, you know. Right after New Year, like when 2020 comes, like I was totally burned out. I said, I can't do this anymore, you know. Uh, fuck everything, you know. Uh, I miss my family and you know, I want to go home. One one way or another, I want to go home. And then, like, I was totally like going mad and crazy and you know burned out. I told my mom, "Mom, I can't do this anymore. I want to go home. I want to spend my the rest of you know. I I want to spend my time with my family already. I'm done. Hmm. I'm sick of this. I'm done." Mm-hmm. And my mom said, "If that's what you want, and anyway, it's been a long time that I want you to. I, I want to tell you that." If you wanna, if you wanna go and spend your time with your family, do it, because I know it's mm. as I see you each and every day. It's really, really hard for you, you know. Um, I can see how hard it is for you for you know for it's how hard is it is for you being away from them. I can see it in your eyes. Mm. Your eyes can't lie. I'm your mom. I know it. <laughs> and I know you're a parent now, so I know how hard it is. You already, you know. Um, you already spend much more than what much more than necessary. So it's your time. It's, it's time for you to go home and spend your time with your family. Look after Mm -hmm. them. You've been looking after, you've been looking after people that we don't know for a long, long time. You've been caring for them, loving them like your own, but it's time. It's, it's now time for you to go home and look after your own. Mm. So, spending all this time with the, your family, what have you learned having so much time with your family and yourself? The importance of you know, um, um, the, the importance of family, you know, be, being right beside them, and you know, uh, and um, learning that. Becoming a father is more harder, more harder than you know, working somewhere else. Like it's the hardest job in the world, but it's the most satisfying one. Like all when I was there, I can give everything that they want, everything that they need, whatever they want, whatever they ask me to. But you know, I am I am in my most happy happiest you know state of my life when I decided to you know go back home and stay with my family stay with my kids and my wife that's awesome yeah. that's awesome all right so we're getting there so i but i have two questions for you do you still have plans on leaving the philippines to work in a different country mm, to be honest yes why not if if that will you know give especially my children a better life yes i still have you know the interest and the plan of working abroad but at the moment, as far as I can see it, how how uh, how close I am now with my kids, it's really really difficult for me now <laughs> to decide if I still have to, if I still need to go somewhere else for me to get a better, jo- uh, you know, to get a job abroad or make something like that and make make money away from them. So I don't know. At the moment, I I, I can't decide. Although I have the interest, but you know. And one thing is my wife won't allow me anymore. So <laughs> said, oh, no. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean he said you've been away way 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 too much. So spend your time with spend time with your kids. Look after them. You've been looking after other people for a long, long time. So it's time for you to look after your kids. Oh don't mind if I'm the one who's working, which you know, which give me gives me the uh, like which shivers me and you know gives gives me goosebumps that you know my wife is very supportive which i am very very yeah. thankful about it you know i'm so thankful that i found the one who you know whom i have the same interest 
Mm. Yeah, she's a good woman. Yeah, so, and I'm, yeah, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm grateful. Mm-hmm. So, do you have any advice for inspiring migrants? Um, for those people who's you know who's dreaming of working abroad or migrating, going somewhere else away from outside the Philippines, <clears throat> it's not bad actually. But you know, make sure that you are really interested or you're really willing to, um work abroad or you know you can manage to um, stay away from your family for a long time because mm. not every person who who migrates or works somewhere else work abroad you know have the same luck that I did when you know when I decided to work for work abroad because we can't deny the fact that you know um it's not okay when you come to the land that you want to work for is like you will end up the way you expect it like salary is good your employer is good things and things like that you can you can never know not not until you are there already just you know um keep on praying you know ask for it that um where uh, the place that you are going is like everything will be okay everything is you know everything is good and stay tough because you know it's really really hard and it's really really difficult for for every indiv- individual working away from their family is you know it's based on my experience it's really really hard uh, i hope i can you know i'm explaining it very well or you know all good all good all good yeah. you're good you're good so thank you for that do you have any last remarks for the listeners Um well for for everybody who's listening in stay healthy and safe you know keep the faith you know that that, that that's what will uh, make us make us survive in each and every day All right again thank you my brother for doing the podcast Yeah yeah thank you thank you man take care I'll stay care and extend my regards to the family man I miss them a lot as well do Thank you bye yeah, bye Again, my brother, thank you for coming on the podcast. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, listeners, for listening. This is Aaron Deliosa for An Immigrant's Life. I'll see you guys later.